Welcome back to another weekly episode of Video Game Updates, Patches, and Notes. Uh, it is the week of July 22nd. Currently, today is July 24th, as you can see by the orb over there. Um, so, we are covering some major news, or major updates, minor updates, and some um, other stuff as well today. It should be a fairly quicker video than the normal, or than the previous weeks anyways. Uh, we're going to start off with some Call of Duty, then we're going into some World of Warcraft as they're prepping for uh, War Within, launching at the end of, or near the end of August. Uh, we also have updates, very, very small updates for Overwatch 2. We'll also cover some minor updates uh, in Fortnite that just came out, or leaks, I guess I should say, um, that has been revealed by Epic. Uh, so we'll be covering that, and then at the end of all this, we're going to be looking at video game releases coming out in August 2024. So hopefully this is a quicker video than most, but again, Call of Duty is the first game up, and it's probably going to be the lengthier one, so apologies for that. But with that said, let's get into it. My name is Sig, I'm one half of two guys, one gamepad, the other half being Roggle. Uh, we release podcast episodes every Thursday where you can listen to them, including here on our YouTube channel. Um, and then we release shorts and TikTok videos on YouTube and TikTok stuff. Uh, so we talk about anything, everything underneath the sun. Nothing's off the limit except for politics and religion. We try not to discuss those and we just have fun doing so. Everything's unscripted and unrehearsed. Uh, this is probably the most scripted section, and this is just really because I'm reading off the patch notes, the fixes, the updates, and everything from the websites themselves. So these are all guaranteed based off of uh, the developers, whether it's Activision Blizzard, whether it's uh, EA, whether it's Ubisoft, whoever it is. It's all from their official website, so this is not me pulling shit out of my ass. So without further ado, let's get into July 22nd week of July 22nd updates. So let's roll out with Call of Duty first. All right, the first game up in today's um, weekly update is going to be Call of Duty. I figure we start with this one because everything I'm getting ready to go over technically has already been re uh, released and was uh, talked about on last week's episode of our weekly updates uh, from the July, the week of the July 15th. So if you want more detailed, more in-depth, uh, go back and watch that episode. Um, it, just use this scroll line down below so where you can find the Call of Duty section or go to the description. But we're going to touch base on a few things that have been updated um, and that we now have full clarity on. So let's get into this again. Call of Duty is always one of the bigger sections of these videos because there's just a lot to go off of. Um, so with that said, let's get into it. So starting off strong, we're going to the Warzone. Um, Call of Duty Warzone Season 5 patch notes. Um, again, you can find all this on callofduty.com forward slash patch notes. This is nothing that I'm pulling any of this crap out of my ass. This is literally on their website. So you know, just, it is what it is. Um, but to, here's the gist of it, that Season 5 Battle Pass inter will introduce over 100 rewards, including new Operator Skins, Weapon, Blueprints, Base Weapons, and more. Purchase the Premium Battle Pass and earn up to 1,400 COD points as you progress those sectors, or purchase Black Cell for the ultimate seasonal experience, including a variety of electric operating skins, Weapon, Blueprint, COD points, and other rewards. Here's the full breakdown. Or we've already done the full breakdown of the Battle Pass. My bad. That's from last week. Again, go to last week if you want to find out more about that. Uh, performance. They've addressed an issue causing poor performance for Xbox One console. My understanding of this from Xbox players is that it's just shit. Um, so it's about freaking time they address this and they actually do something. Again, the best course of action is add more servers and stabilize the connectivity, but is what it is uh, with. Microsoft now owning Activision Blizzard. Or Activision Blizzard, this should have been fixed, or this should be fixed before Black Ops 6 comes out later this year. Um, we'll hope. So let's get into it. Or let's keep continuing, my bad. Customization, improved quality of first-person arm texture on the Gene Ghost Operator, don't care. Removed incompatible underbarrel from the Matambre blueprint for the FJX horse. That's good. All right. Map updates. Again, Yurzik Stan, if you want more information on this, last week's episode has 
all the details like a 30 45 minute session uh, but here's exam superstore has been added so it's a point point of interest poi uh, this is coming from war zone war zone one so this is a very like highly sought after a bunch of people have been wanting it Roggle, the other host of two guys one gamepad absolutely loves this place so he's excited for this um so it's a new point of interest and yours extend big map only um nude modes again this is for yours extend there will be a superstore resurgence limited time mode um impatient to drop straight into the iconic return superstore this intense and compact resurgence experience is a perfect place to relive old memories and have a blast pro tip according to them Watch out for great deals at the buy station. Cool. Uh, player count will only be 28. Its squad size is quad, so four. And match duration is only 10 minutes. So this is a very, uh, very quick resurgence comparative to the other ones. Uh, playlist for weekly playlist, July 24th through July 31st. Uh, Superstore resurgence quads and years extend. Ranked play trails will be on Rebirth Island. Plunder quads will be a years extend as always. Battle Royale, Solo, Duos, Trios, and Quads, Yours Extend, Resurgence, Solo, Duos, and Quads will be on Rebirth Island, Trios is on Map Rotation until the end of this month. Um, then let's go to the Buffs and Nerfs, alright, or, my bad, scratch that, we'll get to that soon. Um, there's new, this is what's new, according to them, it says General is the category, new, Warzone Rewards Season 5 introduces its new weapon camo blueprints and other cosmetic rewards through already available War Warzone reward system. Uh, they've added 16 new challenges divided in four categories. Combat expertise, which will focus on getting weapons and eliminations. Cooperation, which is focused on communicating and helping your squad. Mobility is focused on getting into the heat of battle. And then there's the redacted category. Um, this is intentionally mysterious challenges. So... If you want more information on the redacted, again, we've touched base on it last week. And there's a bunch of videos out there, not from us, but uh, there will be a bunch, maybe from us. We'll see. It depends if I have time to get to them and post them. But uh, as they are discovered on what the challenges are, you can bet your sweet ass if you head over to TikTok or YouTube Shorts or uh, maybe Instagram Reels, who knows. Uh, but TikTok and YouTube should definitely have these. And again, I, I, we will try our best to get these out as soon as possible and when they're discovered whether they're videos we personally made or we're reposting it so you guys can stay up to date um also you'll be able to earn the sports icon weapon blueprint by completing all 16 new challenges cool. all right gameplay new all maps for all modes the rdp rdb sorry rdb a uh, redeploy Drone beacon, field upgrade. Veterans may remember what used to be called the portable redeploy balloon. It has returned with a fresh coat of paint and added functionality. The RDB is called a redeploy drone whenever or wherever you want to relocate your team quickly. The RDB is a light object that can be thrown quite far. Beware enemies can destroy the beacon or the drone at all times, which will be very useful for, for repositioning. Um, this honestly, I feel like could be, or will be a massive game changer for final circle. Um, so I'm excited to see how this is played. I'm sure this is going to be abused really quick and we're just going to get our asses handed to us because of it, but we're also going to use it as well. All maps for resurgence, bon uh, bounty contest, which is a public event. The bounty contest public event assigns a bounty contract to each team, meaning players should always expect to be on the hunt or be hunted. Completing the bounty immediately triggers another one, allowing for a chain of eliminations and series of and serious cash earnings. This event can occur during circles two and five only. As of right now. As of right now, again, it's July 24th. So as of right now. Uh, Champion's Quest Reward Refresh now unlocks new rewards, including an anime camouflage called Super Slick. Um, adjustments, all maps and all modes. Buy station inventory, the RD. B now replaces the PRD uh, inventory, limited stock of two, cost will be $4,000. Uh, this excludes Vondel. And Resurgent Specialist has now been added to the buy station. Inventory is a limited one. Uh, cost will be $30,000, excludes, excludes and ranked. 
All maps in Resurgence, Champion's Quest Timer, the timers for each element has been reduced per squad size. Quads reduced to 10 minutes, 5 seconds, down from 10 minutes, 45 seconds. Trios reduced down, reduced to 8 minutes and 5 seconds, down from 8 minutes and 35 seconds. Duos is reduced to 6 minutes and 30 seconds. It's down from 6 minutes and 40 seconds. And then solos is reduced to 4 minutes and 20 seconds, down from 4 minutes and 30 seconds. Um, this is a little script that Activision Blizzard posted and said, must read. Anyways, it says, we're happy with the current challenge, but we wanted to create more gunfights around the nuke itself. We've noticed a lot of nukes were planted with few squads remaining and or in final circles. That was never the intent, and hopefully these timers reductions will keep the challenge difficult and make the ending more exciting. Okay, cool. Uh, redeploy weapons. Handgun attachments have been refreshed. Updated a few primary supplied later into matches. Public events. The introduction of bounty contests reduces the chance of the following. Occupation scan on Rebirth Island and Vondel. Rogue signal on Fortune's Keep. Solo contract behavior. Quality of life. Contracts will no longer be canceled canceled if you are eliminated in resurgence solo. Oh, cool. On to the weapons. New weapons. We have the static HV, which is a submachine gun, bring a compact lethal lethal to the battlefield with a small SMG chamber and a 5.7 by 28 millimeter weapon. This weapon boosts a high fire rate and sit significant ammo capacity with a base of 50 rounds in its factory magazine available via via battle pass sector six so you can get that really early on uh the stg 44 is an assault rifle this rifle that herald the age of the assault rifles as a global standard fully automatic and chambered in 792 33 millimeters this is a hard-hitting primary weapon you can get this weapon unlocked in battle pass sector seven and then we have new aftermarket parts. Again, if you want more detail, check out last week. But let's get into this one. For week one, the aftermarket part is the Jack Wide Mouth Barrel, which is for the more sniper rifle on the Modern Warfare 3 weapon. Uh, and then we have the week two challenge will be the Jack Catalysm, which is compatible with the RPK LMG. Week three, we'll see the Jack Slash, which is compatible with many weapons with under barrel capabilities. And then for week four challenge, we have Jack Protein. Uh, this is for the RAAL LMG. Um, so those are your four aftermarket parts based on weekly challenges. And then let's get into weapon adjustments. So we're gonna kind of try to go through this really quick. The MCW, um, the adjustment is lower torso, mod Modifier increased to 1.1 up from 1, so MCW got a slight buff. This brings it, this brings it to the same TTK time to kill as the upper torso and arms, leading to more consistent long-range engagement. So MCW is even more broken, basically. Not by much, but still more broken. Uh, SVA 545 got a buff. Its max damage range increased to 36.83 meters, up from 31.75. The bow also the bow 27 also got a buff. Max damage range increased to 26.67 meters up from 21.59. Uh, decreased horizontal recoil magnitude, allowing greater predictability during sustained fire. Decreased overall recoil magnitude to aid in long range effectiveness. And they also decreased overall recoil deviation, ensuring a more predictable pattern of that is easier to control at range. So bow 27 sounds like it's back and I We've talked shit about metas, but it sounds like that's going to be a nasty weapon again, which is good. Love the Battle 27. Um, by the way, these are all assault rifles. I forgot to mention that. Next up is the MTZ 556. It got a buff as well. Near mid damage range increased to 60.96 meters, up from 50.8. And then lastly on the assault rifle, we have the M4 from Modern Warfare 2. Uh, it got a slight buff as well. Minimum damage increased to 21, up from 17. Near mid damage increased to 24, up from 21. And max damage range in increased to 30.48 meters, up from 25.4. This weapon kind of came out of nowhere um, as a powerhouse a few weeks ago. So it's 
It's nice they're still buffing some MW2 weapons. Battle Rifles next. We have the Bass B. It got a buff. Max damage range increased to 40.64 meters up from 35.56. The TAC V, which is another Modern Warfare 2 weapon, uh, it took a small buff as well. Leg modifier increased to 0.9x up from 0.85x. Then we have our submachine guns. We have the AMR9 got another buff. Max damage range increased to 12.7 meters up from 10.67. Near mid damage range increased to 21.59 meters up from 17.78. Again, that used to be a pretty gnarly weapon. Seems like they're beefing it up again. Um, FJX Horse, which is already a freaking broken weapon right now or it was last week um it's even more now uh it got buff max damage range oh my bad i misread it got a nerf it got a nerf max damage range decreased to 8.63 meters down from 10.16 uh, did near near mid damage range decreased to 17.27 meters down from 20.32 Mid damage range decreased to 25.9 meters, down from 30.5, uh, 30.48, and then but they increased the sprint to fire time to 110 milliseconds, up from 93 milliseconds. Good, good. Sick of dying from that, but also I'm upset because that weapon was so freaking broken last week. Um, I was actually doing really well on Warzone, so that means something. Uh, and then we have the Supreme 46. It also got a nerf. Thank God. Sick of this one. Uh, anyways, the nerfs are decreased movement speed to 4.9 uh, meters per second, down from 5 meters per second. Decreased crouch movement speed to 1.9 meters per second, down from 2. Decreased sprint speed to 5.8 meters per second, down from 5.9. And then the decreased ADS movement speed to 3.4 meters, down from 3.6. Not a big nerf like a lot i've been seeing a lot of people talking about all right and then we have the wsp9 this got nerf um leg modifier decreased to 0.9x down from 1x um according to them wsp is a great longer range smg option but we they wanted to ensure you needed to be more accurate with your shots to hit the intended ttk Next, we have the Imbok, which is a Modern Warfare 2. This got a buff. Mid damage increased to 26, up from 21. Mid da max damage range increased to 11.43 meters, up from 8.38. Near mid damage range increased to 21.56 meters, up from 19.05. Uh, Lower torso modifiers increased to 1.1, up from 1. Arm and hand modifier increased to 1.1, up from 0.95. Uh, the PDSW 528, also MW2 weapon, got a buff. Mid damage increased to 19, up from 16. Near mid damage increased to 24, up from 22. The VEL 46 MW2 weapon, near mid damage increased to 22, up from 20. Mid damage, min minimum damage increased to 16, up from 15. Arm and hand modifier increased to 1.1, up from 1. So got a slight buff as well. And then the Vaznev 9K MW2 weapon got a buff as well. Uh, mid damage range or mid damage increased to 27 up from 25. Minimum damage increased to 23 up from 20. Max damage range increased to 11.43 meters up from 8.89. And then we have the LMGs, which is light machine gun. We have the Bruin MK9 got a buff. Max damage range was increased to 36.83 meters, up from 31.75. The Holliger, Holliger 26 got a nerf. Lower torso modifier decreased to 1, down from 1.1. 1 .1. um, this is a side note from Activision Blizzard. The Holliger 26 was a dominant long-range choice this past season, and while we, they want to keep it a viable long-range option, it was slightly overperforming. This change makes it so you have to be a bit more accurate to get that intended TTK. Yeah, okay, sure. That's not a big nerf, but whatever. Uh, the poly, or sorry, we call it the poly. The Pulmoit 762. I know I butchered that. I don't care. Uh, it got a buff. The max damage range increased to 34.29 meters, up from 
27.94. Upper, upper and lower arm modifier increase to 1.1, up from 1. Attack Eradicator got a buff as well. Minimum damage increased to 28, up from 24. Max damage range increased to 39.37, up from 33.02 meters. And then Attack Evolver Leg Modifier increased to 1.07x, up from 1. So all LMGs, but the, or sorry, four of the LMGs we just talked about got a buff. The Holiger 26 is the only one that got a slight nerf, so it'll still be broken. That's fine. On the shotguns, the Reclaimer 18 um, it looks like slight buff, uh, but more of a, they fix an issue causing inconsistent damage dealt to enemies in both fire types. Semi-auto increased rate of fire is now 200 RPMs. It's up from 182. Uh, then we have the KV Broadside, the Jack Jawbreaker Conversion Kit. Got nerfed, decreases vertical recoil by 20%. That's a buff. All right, handgun, core 45, uh, decreased rate of fire to 240, down from 375. Holy shit, that was a, I didn't realize it was that bad. Um, or that high, sorry, my bad. The XRK V6 match trigger action has a decreased rate of fire to 264 rounds per minute, down from 438. This thing used to be freaking broken. Uh, the heavy match trigger action is also decreased fire to 272 RPMs down from 545. And yet, I still couldn't kill anybody with this damn weapon. Uh, lastly, onto the melee weapons to round this all out. The sledgehammer got nerfed, decreased movement speed by... Yeah, got nerfed. Decreased movement speed by 22%. Decreased heavy swing melee range from to 3.2 meters down from 5.3. I don't yeah. The sledgehammer was a weird melee weapon. Um, funky, slow, and just not not great. Uh, yeah, your primary swing wasn't your best movement. It was your melee swing or your secondary. Anyways. Uh, Warzone rank play, there's a lot to cover in this one. New emblems, new anime emblems, new charms, new calling cards, all based upon where you rank. Um, more information on that again on last week's episode. Uh, they have some UI and UX fixes. Dynamic gas mask overlay quality of life. The gas mask overlay will now fade in and out depending upon if you're in the gas or not. This way players can equip the gas mask at any time without having their vision impacted. Good. Uh, reinforcement flare quality of life update they added a reminder in the hud whenever your squad mate is eliminated and you have a reinforcement flare available um, the infill parachute added to the parachute camera perspective setting in the console graphic menu the setting allows players to change between first and third person view while parachuting during the initial infill plate carriers the stow prompt now appears properly when looking at a plate carrier loot card that was a big issue and then rounding this out the bug fixes uh they fixed an issue preventing the fine party feature from functioning properly good fixed several issues causing crashes and errors i'll be the judge of that i had so many freaking cra uh, crashes and error codes last week a oh, few weeks actually um, they fixed the issue causing a vehicle icon to be larger than intended on the mini map and tack map Fix an issue in Plunder, preventing the down icon from appearing in the kill feed. Fix an issue causing the backup pistol to remain in the player's hand while entering a, a boat. Yep, that was an issue. Fix an issue preventing the specialist pack, perk pack from updating the currently holding section in the buy station. Fix an issue causing a player to get booted to the main menu while in Gunsmith. Yep, we had that. Fix an issue causing a player to be kicked out of private match lobbies when looking at a player profile, and they fix an issue causing text to overlap on redacted weapon loot cards. Yeah, that was a big pain in the ass. I'm not gonna lie. So, um, and again, if you want more information on like the season five, all the new maps, uh, new modes, and everything, go check it out. Um, last week's episode, there's a lot to go into it. Um, they have tons of new modes coming to multiplayer. There you have two brand new maps and three variant maps coming in. 
Um, new weapons, of course, which we've kind of talked about, but also like like uh, week we did week one, two, three, and four. Week five and the challenge, you will be able to unlock the Torque Thirty Five, which is a launcher, um, and then it's a compound bow. Uh, we've already talked about the jack parts, and then the week six and seven aftermarket parts for week six challenge and week seven challenge. Week six will be the Death March, which is about Battle 27 Assault Rifle. Uh, this is an aftermarket part, replaces standard ammo with high voltage power cells and the barrel with a photonic scatter barrel. Uh, it fires a spread of lethal lasers and blasts that take down enemies at short range. And then for week seven, uh, Reclaimer 18 shotguns getting a Jack Devastator, which allows you to dual wield it as well. Uh, WWE's collab with them. Um, um, yeah, so we have the new events. WWE SummerSlam will take place July 31st through August 7th. Conquest event will take place August 7th through August 14th. Echo Indo Live is August 14th through August 21st. Battle Beast will take place August 21st through August 28th. And Emotional Overdrive will take place September 12th through September 18th. Um, they introduced new prestige, so now you can level up to 1,050. And they introduced new mercury animated weapon prestige camo at 250,000 weapon xp um, on a global scale they fix some stability and performance issues addressing an issue causing poor performance again for xbox one customization again just minor stuff like that and we've already already did the ui ux we've already done the gameplay uh, weapon attachments yeah that is of killstreaks score it earn via killstreak will no longer contribute towards okay cool mgb with the looming threat of a dna bomb now contain the mgb returns cool uh zombies they resolved a crash that occurred when multiple users placed a sentry turret at the same time several crash bugs occurred while getting kills with unstable riff uh progression the reclaimer 18 challenge you get 20 consecutive kills with the reclaimer 18 10 times without taking damage now progresses as in 10 that's good because that I did that last week. I it, it did not work for me. I was just getting mad. Uh, let's see issues and feedback. Yep, that's that's pretty much it for them, isn't it? Uh, we got a a upcoming uh, here in August. There's an upcoming event. Where Call of Duty is going to go more in depth about Black Ops 6. Um, again, if you pre ordered Black Ops 6, you get early access starting August 30th to September 4th on all platforms. There is no, uh, no perk of like having a PlayStation or having an Xbox or having a PC. All systems will get early access August 30th to September 4th if you pre ordered. If you did not pre order, all systems will gain access to open beta September 6th through September 9th. So that's kind of, you know. Big news, in all honesty. But they revealed the campaign. Again, we've talked more about this last week in the updates. Uh, we got a teaser trailer. We saw Nuketown is coming back. You're going to be able to map vote. Omnidirectional movement, which is fantastic. You'll be able to slide forward, backwards, side to side. There's going to be a lot of changes coming, and it's all for Black Ops 6 mon uh, multiplayer and campaign. It's not going to currently be in Warzone, but they have said they are working on integrating that Omni movement to Warzone, um, which is actually supposedly the reason why we're not going to get um, a new map in Warzone. It's because a new big map in Warzone because of that. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Um, it's all hearsay in all honesty. And it's just some people report that it's the reason why other people report it's not. So it's a great assault type situation. Onward to the next game. Let's get after it. Let's move on to World of Warcraft and their hot fixes. This is as of July 22nd. Hot fix pat note patch notes uh which again all these can be found at worldwarcraft.blizzard.com 
and or you just go to worldofwarcraft.com and go to content update the notes and it'll be right there again just relaying this information so let's get into it for july 22nd this is what was <clears throat> fixed or introduced or altered or removed items they fixed an issue where the antique bronze boolean were not being awarded this week boolean should continue to drop every week until war within launches which if you're not already familiar war within dlc launches august 26th and it is one of their uh more important dlcs in quite some time um dragonflight was amazing i played through the whole storyline both uh horde and alliance side and with uh the Janeer, or not Janeer, that's not the right word i'm freaking butchering that one anyways uh played through all of it and it's amazing i'm excited for World war within and this is what's going to kind of help set this all up so uh, anyways back to it uh, next up is Season of Discoveries. Uh, Devil Sword Gauntlets should no longer require core leather. They now require 12 Devil Sword leather and 8 it's Essence of Fire in addition to their other existing mats. Devil Sword Leggings should now require 20 Devil Sword leather, leathers and 10 Essence of Fire in addition to their other mats as well. Uh, made some improvements to the respawn rate of mobs and quest objects on the Alcaz Island. The chip Drake Fire Amulet and the Valor of Azeroth Spellbook are now available from Squire Row in Stormwind and Etrig in Orgamar for players who have completed the Onyxia quest chain. Gift the Gob will no longer cancel on stealth. It made some improvements for Bulver War Dragons respawn time. Zor Lone Tree's wares are available where while completing Ruined Discoveries. Uh, they corrected the stats on the old old guard retaliator. Uh, Darkmoon card Sandstorm will no longer ignore line of sight. Quest of Zalgor and Explosion no longer erroneously give Zandalar tribe reputation. They now give reputation for the Emerald Wardens up to friendly 5,999 out of 6,000. These quests will always reward the same amount of reputation based on levels. Um, all runes sold by the Emerald Warden Quartermaster will no longer require reputation to purchase. Catnip and Wolf's, Wolf's Head Trophy no longer requires Emerald Warden reputation to purchase. The Lost Tablets of uh, Masharu should now be completed or completable if you've previously completed the God Hakar. The Nightmare Incursions, uh, Gamu Raja, will now, will now leash and no longer has infinite range of certain attacks. Um, and then for classes, Hunters, Explosive Shot will no longer ignore line of sight. Fix an issue with lethal shots that made it stop working after death until the Hunter re-equips their ranged weapon. Uh, mages, Presence of Mind will no longer be removed from the Mage without successfully casting Chronostatic Preservation. Rogues, when the Carnage Rune is engraved, Crimson Trent Tempest will now correctly apply Carnage to all enemies struck by the DOT. For Shamans, Clear casting will now correctly be consumed if you have five stacks of Mail Storm weapon and you cast a non Mail Storm weapon empowered spell. Totem of Earthrend Vitality will no longer activate when the Shaman is merely struck, and Overcharge will no longer ignore line of sight. Warlocks, Master Chandler's Drain Life will no longer prematurely end versus large enemies like Lord Kazak. Mark of Chaos will no longer fail to refresh if the target has Curse of Elements or Curse of Shadows active on them. Curse of Elements and Curse of Shadows will now return a more powerful spell is already active prompt. And then for Warriors around this hotfix up, Warriors, bosses, and dungeons are now always immune to Meat Hook as intended. So that is all the World of Warcraft hotfixes. Uh, they still have basically a month left before War Within comes out. So we still have four weeks um, and it's going to be massive updates near the final week to prep everything for war with it so onward to uh, the collective final as we'll call it so i'll see you in a second all right and next up this is going to be kind of like a, a hodgepodge because there's a few games on here that have that had little, like little minor updates releases or patches or whatever and they're not 
very long. Like it's literally going to take me maybe a minute or two for each. So we're just going to kind of lump it all together along with looking at next month's video game releases. Okay. Cause it is, again, it's August or it's July 24th right now. So when we do this one next week, it's going to be for the week of the 29th of July, which is also including the 1st of August. So we're just going to felt like this is a good time to do the release information as well. So, but our first game up is going to be overwatch, um, overwatch patch notes as of July 23rd. Um, they had seven bug fixes and one hero fix. So for the bug fixes, um, the first week of season 11 daily and weekly challenges are resetting progress incorrectly for some players to compensate this. Uh, Blizzard is granting all players two tier skips for the season pass. Uh, fix a misspelling in the subtitle in the voice line for Reinhardt. Fix an issue where some voice chat volume sliders were missing from the sound options. Fix a previous hotfix uh, for Dorado no longer crashes and is re-enabled. Fix a previous hotfix where uh, Ramatra no longer has 11 second cooldown on his abilities. Another hot fix, or another fix in a previous hot fix, um, Orissa's energy javelin no longer does critical damage. Aw. Fix in a previous hot fix, Sombra no longer reveals herself to an entire enemy team if spotted by a single enemy. And then we have the heroes. Uh, Mercy's the only one that got a update or patch th this week. They resolved an issue with statistics for Mercy's resurrect ability not tracking correctly in the scoreboard or progression. Super simple, less than a minute. And then we have Fortnite uh, 30.40 updates, release, and leaks. Um, the next Fortnite update will be the 30.40 patch, which will be released on August 6th. According to the schedule, um, they are set to roll out every two weeks. And the last one, 30.30, dropped on July 23rd, which is yesterday. Um, but so. Chapter four will see, or chapter five, season four. Yeah, there we go. So it looks like, see, yeah, it's just like minor little set stuff. So according to this, this uh, version 3040 is the next and final update that developers will release in chapter five, season three. In terms of its content, it shouldn't be too big, but it could contain files related to live events expected to end the season. Um, there's experience for lego fortnite and festival these updates will stay refresh across all modes I'm sure you guys can hear my kids um let's see if there's anything else so that's not a lot like that's again this is why i said there's very very minimum stuff um fortnite with a crossover for deadpool and wolverine everything they know um epic hasn't confirmed this but based upon files found, it looks like there are skins and animation to hint at that based on encrypted files. So again, like just minor stuff. Uh, we do know Fortnite is collabing with Pirates of the Caribbean after they accidentally messed that up. Again, that was released, I think, last week or two weeks ago. Um, and then Diablo 4 Spiritborn is just... Uh, uh, Spiritborn is coming out, or did come out, sorry. July 18th, so kind of or after I did last week's update. I wasn't official, um, but so that has officially came out. There's just there's not a lot of like major updates for some of these games. Um, Apex Legends went back on their battle pass changes, so they were originally going to split it into two, making it so where you had to spend spend money uh every like i think it was every month they said um it was just gonna be obscene amount of money uh, and then the battle pass itself wasn't anything great they announced they were going to do this and they made bigger ch made massive changes to the battle pass and in doing so it pissed off the entire community um, calling for them to revert it back to the original because you couldn't use your apex coins to purchase the battle pass anymore um so they've completely basically said, oops, our bad. And they're going to go back to the old ways rather than um, stick with what they were going to do. Um, so 
Yeah, so basically the original one was like there was a free tier with a total of 18 rewards. You would only unlock 20, uh, 200 Apex coins and 7 Apex packages. And then for nine for 950 Apex coins, you get the Premium Pass, which will give you 92 rewards, 1,300 coins, uh, 1,200 crafting materials, 14 Apex packs, and 10 exotic shards. Uh, and that's all through 60 levels. Again, these are still broken up into two tier, two sessions. Uh, and this will start with the Season 22 split on September 17th. So again, everything's still like... Sorry. Split 1 is August 6th. Split 2 is September 17th. My bad. Um, but anyways, so it's all based on 60, le 60 levels of the Battle Pass. Um, if you want the Ultimate Battle Pass, it's $10. You get... The exact same as premium, but you will now get instant rewards of eight Apex packs and additional 1200 crafting materials. And then the ultimate plus is going to be $20 and you get a little bit more from the total rewards uh, and a little bit more exotic shards. So you get 95 total rewards, 1300 Apex coins, 1200 crafting materials, 14 Apex packs and 20 exotic shards. But you will also get two legendary skin variants. You will still get your AX8 Apex packs instantly for purchasing it, along with 1200 crafting materials instantly. And um, I don't know that icon. 10. Oh shit, I don't know that. And all legends will become playable with, the, with that. What is that? But of course, this is all still set to change. They still have several updates, or still have a few more weeks, a couple more weeks, my bad, until August 6th when season 22 officially launches. But this battle pass has just like, if you want to know more about this, I don't normally cover Apex because we don't play it, but this has so many people pissed off. And the fact that this has just riled an entire community, people who are hardcore advocates for Apex and people who just like, eh, I'll play it occasionally. Are just freaking mad mad at it um so, yeah uh for destiny 2 this week they announced three separate community focus events uh, you will have uh update to salvation edge master challenges okay echoes act 2 trailer got released late last week um but yeah, you're gonna have more events coming to that one basically uh, phasmophobia is still releasing or still updating stuff for the console release later this year uh they just kind of said they have you know new merch stuff coming and then to wrap this updates and patches section up uh, splitgate has officially announced that splitgate 2 is happening uh it will be re released 2025 they released a cinematic trailer just a few days ago and it's still 4v4 it's still free to play shooter and the split gate universe uh they're they're including more factions more weapons more uh, abilities and special effects with your portal skills more than just like teleporting like it's split gate 2 looks really good um i'm not a big fan of the animation or the graphic design style they chose for it, but I get it. It's a full refresh, uh, but it's amazing. I, I'm, I'm excited for this. I cannot wait for it to to come out. Uh, if for anybody who's like, what about Splitgate 1? Because there's not too many people there. Uh, Splitgate 1 is not getting shut down. They will still support it. They said you just have to kind of keep an eye on it and update the patches will come out slower than normal once Splitgate 2 comes out. Um, any, any split coin that you purchase for split gate one will carry over split gate two. Um, do, 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 do. skins will not transfer in the same way. As, uh, basically they say you can't peel the paint off of your house and apply it to a mansion you move in. So skins will not transfer over. They're working on, um, item progression. So, oh, hold on. Why did you, oh, never mind. Scrap the split coin thing. I've read two different sections. That's my bad. 
you if you have split coin right now you need to use it because it will not merge to split gate because they're changing the the buy system entirely uh, but they've also stopped all purchase of split coin in split gate or uh split gate two one so you can't like you can't purchase any more coins right now um and that's from 1047 games team so i'm excited i think that's gonna be a fantastic game or i'm hoping for it to be a fantastic game um to got Takata is now officially available in Mortal Kombat 1, like we talked about last week. So that is all the updates and patches. Uh, let's wrap this up with August 2024 video game releases. Uh, so we have for the mobile, or sorry, we have Harvest Moon Home Sweet Home. It's coming out on mobile devices. Star Wars Bounty Hunter, which is coming out on PC, PlayStation 4, and 5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox X slash S. That releases August 1st. World of Goo 2 comes out on the Switch August 2nd. Cat, oh my god, my kids. Cat Quest 3, which comes out on PC, PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox X slash S, is com comes out August 8th. Also coming out on August 8th is Steam World Heist 2 for the Switch. Kena, Kena Bridge of Spirit, which is coming out on the Xboxes 1 and X slash S on the 15th of August. Rug ooh, Rugrats. <laughs> Rugrats Adventure in Game Land will hit PC and consoles August 16th. Uh, Black Myth Wukong will come out on PC, PS5, and Xbox X and S on August 20th. Deathborn will hit PlayStation, both PlayStation devices, PC, and both Xboxes August 20th as well. Concord will come out on PS5 and PC August 23rd. Uh, of course, as mentioned several times before, World of Warcraft The War Within comes out for PC August 26th. Emio, the Smile Smiling Man FanCon Detective Club will hit the Switch on August 29th. Visions of Mana will hit PC, PlayStation, and Xbox on August 29th. And the long anticipated and yet highly controversial um, announcement of Star Wars Outlaws will hit PC, PS5, Xbox X, and S on August 30th. Uh, Star Wars Outlaw has so much just Ugh. This has been one of the more controversial games. Um, it's published by Ubisoft. It's supposed to be an open world game. And if you have not heard of this yet, you can go Google it. Um, or I will I will talk more about it when the game actually comes out to see how it compares to what was promised and advertised and trailers and all that. But this game just had a lot of uh, potential yet it wasn't that great at the same time if it, it, it's very convoluted I, I don't know how to explain it without saying they promised a lot and then they quickly started backtracking this year because they've announced outlaws for a while now and basically just it doesn't look that great it doesn't have the same promise it did at the initial launch or reveal of it so time will tell but that comes out august 30th so we shall see how well that is um but yeah other than that that's all the patches dlcs updates and game releases let's wrap this episode up all right everyone that's that is that we've covered call of duty season 5 update that just went live today at the time of this recording july 24th rule of warcraft patches we saw minor updates for fortnite overwatch split gate mortal kombat uh, Phasmophobia. Uh, wow, this went just through my. Uh, and we gotta look at all the August twenty eight, all the August two thousand twenty four releases. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And again, we try to release these updates every week, um, and just kind of like around the middle of the week to the end of the week. In the middle of the week, we record all of it, and then hopefully it gets released. And you're watching this now at the end. Um, so again, if there's a game that you want us to cover, let us know in the comments or DM us and, uh, just let us know privately as we know not everybody wants to comment. That's perfectly fine. Other than that, go check out our episodes every Thursday, everywhere you get podcasts, including on this YouTube channel. Um, on top of that, you can catch Roggle and myself live every Thursday night as we live stream Call of Duty for now. And that's the only game he, he plays. Not shit talking, just the facts. Um, so 
we play Call of Duty and we just have fun. We chill out and relax, decompress from the, the week, and we do it live. You can catch Roggle at on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash Roggle, R-A-H-G-E-L. And then you can catch myself, um, CyberMercSig, at Twitch, YouTube, Kick, TikTok, really everywhere. Um, all you have to do is go down to the descriptions below and you'll be able to find all of our links. Other than that, don't forget to like, follow, and or don't forget to the like and subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to stay up to date and get notified when these releases get, or when these videos get released. And this is all unrehearsed, unscripted. I'm just rambling at this point. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next. Yeah.